The NFL on CBS from Soldier Field getting set for San Diego and Chicago. These teams have been going in opposite directions. The Bears have won four in a row at six and three in the NFC North, while the Chargers have dropped four straight in that wild AFC West. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims will be seeing Chicago receiving the opening kickoff. And again, these two teams, man, they're going in opposite directions right now. You said it right. The Bears are hot. The San Diego Chargers. What we got to watch today is the offensive line. Basically, three new starters in there. That's not something you want when you're playing against Julius Peppers. Yeah, both of these teams really have issues on the offensive line. It's a chilly day here in Chicago, which you would expect mid-November. Been an overcast day, but everything's just fine as Johnny Knox is back deep for the Bears, not Devin Hester. Knox to take the kick from Nick Novak. Novak, who will be kicking it here, has had a good season for San Diego, filling in for Nate Kading, who was injured in the first game. Back on the opening kickoff of the season. Blew out his knee, but Novak originally came into the league, signed as an undrafted free agent by the Bears in 05, didn't make the team. And he bounced around the league before settling here in San Diego this season. It's Knox from the goal line, and Knox, who has that speed, is backed up and finished off at the 22. Gatchkar on the tackle, and here comes Jay Cutler, the quarterback for the Bears, who of course has seen plenty of San Diego through the years. Five times he was matched up against them as the quarterback of the Broncos out there in the West. And again, the Bears have changes on the offensive front, two players being IR this week. And Forte has been a big story this season, accounting for 44% of their offense. Chris Williams and Gabe Karimi both put on IR this week on that line. And it's Forte met by Jammer. Does a good piece of tackle and holds him to one. All right, will the San Diego defense be up to the occasion here with a young front today? That's a third-year man in Martin, second-year man in Thomas, and rookie Legion by way at the University of Illinois. No Phillips today. He's out still with a foot injury. So it's Antoine Barnes for him. And Weddle with five interceptions, which is tied for the league lead. So second down at nine. And Forte sets up screen. And Cutler over to Forte. You can see that one developing. Forte, such a threat out of the backfield. And he loses two yards. That's Weddle coming up and making the stick. Yeah, I think you're right. There, there's a couple things. This Chargers defense... Start with that. We saw two good plays to start the game. Weddle on the tackle. Uh, the coaching staff, Greg Minuski, defensive coordinator, tackling the football, stay in your lane, be more disciplined, all applies to this football team after last week against the Oakland Raiders. So the Bears have had opening drive touchdowns. The last couple of games, can they keep the opening drive going here? Long pass, and that's Roy Williams. It looked like he knocked it down. He got away for a moment from Weddle, and it's an incompletion. Well, the fact that he had to fight Eric Weddle for the football and really probably pushes him off. Top of your screen, you're going to see Roy Williams going deep. And Jay Cutler, I love this, take a chance. But when he makes that second move to get away from Eric Weddle, I think he lost the football. That's why he dropped it. Adam Podlish in to punt, the former Jacksonville Jaguar, who has never had a punt return for a touchdown in his career. Had some pressure. It's a fair catch call. Patrick Creighton comes up. That'll be an excellent starting point for Rivers and the San Diego Chargers after a 35-yard punt. All right, what about Rivers? What will he do here today, particularly with that patchwork offensive line? That's the big question mark of the game up front. All kinds of changes. Dombrowski for McNeil. Merchkowski starts at left guard as Dealman had to be put on injured reserve. Changes on the right side too. And then you've got Vincent Brown who's looked strong. Subbing for Malcolm Floyd these last two weeks for head coach North Turner. McMichael is in to start the game and a little play action fake and they set it up for Gates. Tight end screen and Gates rumbles down to the Chicago 39-yard line. Got a nice block out there by 
the rookie, Steven Schilling, as well as Vincent Jackson for 18. Take advantage of a defensive front that says, wow, they got an offensive line, three new starters. Let's get after the quarterback. So you take advantage of that with draws and screens. Look what it looks like from above. Boy, it's a nice play fake. And Antonio Gates, Jim, we know he's had those foot problems, but that's about as fast as I've seen him run. You got a few games we've done this year with San Diego Chargers. He missed games early in the season. He's been back for about a month. Good soft grass here in Chicago. This field is in excellent condition. Ryan Matthews, the running back, and he gets the handle. Matthews with a huge hole. Matthews to the 20 and wrapped up at the last moment by Chris Conti. His first carry is good for 24. Well, you said it, Dombrowski, the left tackle, the right, the left guard is. Murkowski and a good job Ryan Matthews with such speed and Jacob Hester gets a good lead block the Conte saves the touchdown the one thing that Norv Turner said I gotta call the plays differently run the football more but be more conservative as an offensive play caller Jackson in motion on first down from the Chicago 16 Hess Matthews again, and that time Charles Tillman is manning the edge there for no gain. And here is that Chicago defense with the great coordinator Rod Marinelli talking about wanting consistency on every down, including Julius Peppers up front. Superior linebacking core with Briggs, Erlacher, and the former Charger practice squad player Nick Roach. And Tillman, who just made that last tackle, who had a pick six last week, and there is Rod Marinelli. Second down and 10. Hester is in the game. Split wide to the left. And that's going to be Matthews. Leaving up the middle. And he lost the football. Lost the football after a nice gain. It looks like the Chargers believe they have it. it may have been Dombrowski. Yes, Dombrowski falls on it after a gain of six. Typical situation here. Second and long, you're expecting pass. They mix it up, they go with the run, and that is a nice hit from behind. It causes the fumble. That gets Lance Briggs. That just hits him so far behind, it makes Ryan Matthews let go of the football. Actually give him five on the play. Heads up play by Dombrowski. Mike Tolbert has come in at running back third and five. Chargers trying to get off to a fast start. Rivers throws it over to Jackson in traffic and he's brought down right away by Tillman. They'll have to settle for a field goal. We've got an update on Cincinnati Baltimore. James Brown has it. Cincy trying to tie it up. Fourth down, coach. Fourth down, Pernell McPhee, the rookie, beats the left tackle, and it's a sack on Andy Dalton, and Baltimore comes away with a 31-24 win. Ravens wow. beat without Ray Lewis getting it done. Back to Jim and Phil. So the Bengals fall to six and four. Thank you, fellas. And the Ravens improve to seven and three. And this will be a 28-yard attempt by Nick Novak, who's 17 of 19 on the year. And Novak converts. An opening three for the San Diego Chargers. Big confidence builder for the San Diego Chargers. We talked about it many times. With that offensive line, good run blocking, good pass protection. Jim Nance and Phil Sims, we welcome you to Soldier Field in Chicago. Those of you who saw the Ravens hold on, get that victory today inside that AFC North over a stubborn Cincinnati team, 31-24. We're early action here. Three plays and a punt for the Bears to start it. And then San Diego, aided by a big uh, run by Ryan Matthews to get in field goal range. They convert from 28 out by Nick Novak, and they have opening drive points for the third straight game. Have over there trying to finish off what has been a four-game losing streak in San Diego. Now Devin Hester, he was not back for the opening kickoff, but he is now. You know he's back. You don't even have to look. All this history he's making, return history, including a punt return last week. The crowd lets you know he's back there. They get so excited when Devin Hester is returning. Gets to step up to the five for this one. And he's 
going nowhere. Mike Tolbert makes the play. So valuable on this Charger team. And he backs up the Bears inside the 20. I'd like to welcome many of you just joining us here to our doubleheader game on CBS from Soldier Field in Chicago. Jim Nance and Phil Sims, glad to have you with us as the Bears. They've been hot the last month. They've won four in a row. They're down an early field goal to San Diego. They have their second possession of the game, and that's Matt Forte moving the pile out to about the 20, and a gain of five. Tackled by Cam Thomas. How about the way Forte has played for this team this season? Well, he can do it all. There's no doubt when you look at Matt Forte, tremendous runner, breaks tackles. To be a great runner, you got to make people miss, and you got to be able to break that first tackle, take a short run, and make it a long run, and also a good receiver out of the backfield. And this offense, it's built around running the football. And it's Forte running it. And the Chargers are there, including... Kaysen to finish him off. Steve Gregory was there first. Well, I think you saw what the Chargers want from this defense. We've seen it a couple times already today. Stay inside. Give up the pass rush. Stop the run. And once the runner bounces outside, which we saw Forte do, the corners, outside linebackers get there and make the tackle. Discipline. When I look at their defense, getting ready for this game, a lot of good individual efforts, but you've got to be disciplined as a unit. They have not done that the last few games. It's a third and three. And a flag thrown. And it's going to be against the Bears. Jeff Triplett, our referee today. False start, 73 the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You can get scores while managing your CBS Sports Fantasy football teams on your mobile phone. To get the free app, simply call Star Star CBS or go to cbssports.com slash mobile. And there is Lovey Smith in his eighth year. They, of course, were the divisional champs last year. They made it to the NFC title game, hosting the Packers who defeated them on their way to winning the Lombardi Trophy. And here we go, third and eight. And open is Williams. Nice effort by Cutler, who was backpedaling and threw it off his back foot. Completes it for 14. Well, let's get that back foot throw out of the way. If you can't throw off your back foot in the NFL, then you can't play quarterback. It is a blitz by the Chargers. Jay Cutler is dangerous once he moves outside the pocket because he can sit up fast, quick. Roy Williams, nice route. Stopping it at the first down, and he can throw well on the run. And when you blitz Jay Cutler, the first thing that I've noticed they do, they look down the field for the big play. Devin Hester, speaking of a big playmaker, he's wide to the left on first down. Play action, and Cutler throws in, and it's caught by Knox. Knox had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Quentin Jammer, and he was able to snag it and take it inside the 40 for a 31-yard play. Interesting receiving core they have here in Dallas. When Earl Bennett is back, well, that is a nice move. Quentin Jammer has him outside, knows he has help inside, but he still went for the fake by Johnny Knox inside. Nice double move. That's why he was open into the win. Good throw by Jay Cutler. So Chicago picking up that big first down on third and eight. And then complete a 31-yarder to Knox to move it inside the San Diego 40. Still throwing, and that's Forte to the 20-yard line. Picking up big chunks, this for 17. And small windows, tight throws, that's what this offense is about. They spread them out, and look how quick it is. Matt Forte against the linebacker. That's Donald Butler, just not able to stay with him on the vertical pass. Three straight plays that have gone for at least 15 yards. You know, that play, the, the formation will catch you by surprise, Jim. Chicago kind of plays a lot of condensed formations. All of a sudden, you got five wide receivers. And Barber's a wide receiver. Cutler stumbles. The pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage. You know, you look at this San Diego defense. 
And I think there may have been a misstep here as he was trying to pull back. Well, yes, either that or he's the most left-footed Jay Cutler. The left foot of the... Chris Spencer. Spinner. Yeah, the right guard stepped on him, so you got to be careful. But when you're the San Diego Chargers defense, they got a pressure inside, putting a lot of pressure on Quentin Jammer and Antoine Kaysen to cover one-on-one -on -one down the field. So on second down and 10, that's going to be a loss of about three for Forte. Vaughn Martin coming up and making the play. I talked about how youthful this defensive front is for San Diego. Their, their base three up front, Legion, a rookie. Cam Thomas, who's made a play, second year man. And Vaughn Martin, who made that tackle in his third year out of Western Ontario. Well, a lot of hope. I mean, they got some guys. Vaughn Martin is learning to play football. You said it out of Ontario. Big and strong. Now look, there's a tremendous upside to him. But the problem with upside is what? It's they need all this stuff now. Well, they brought in now Antonio Garay on that defensive front. Third down and 13. And that is Bennett with the catch, but he's immediately out of bounds. Ooh, Mike, it, it, did he catch it in bounds? Did he get both feet as he as he was moving? Not going to matter. They're going to not be anywhere close to a first. They'll give him yeah. six. It's still six yards for a field goal attempt. So it'll be Robbie Gold. This is in pregame warmers. How he practices trying to hit the upright. Little, little accuracy attempt and rattles the flag stick with our the goal post with our goal post camera. And they did rule that, by the way, incomplete, Phil. So this will be 42 yards for Robbie Gold. So they looked at it. Uh, one official came over and waved off the completion. 42 yards, Robbie Gold. Man, has he been accurate. Third most accurate place kicker in NFL history. Now 21 of 23 on the year. And it's 3-3 at Chicago. Back in Chicago tonight, the amazing race all new. And the former NFL player, Marcus Pollard. They don't look like they're too big a hurry to get to the next country, flexing those muscles. But they'll be on an amazing race tonight here on America's number one network. As Richard Goodman deciding to run out. Gold's kick eight yards deep. And Goodman with a good piece of running. It's a 33-yard run back to about the 25. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network. And by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. Aerial coverage of the game is provided by MetLife. First quarter action at Soldier Field. Jim Nance and Phil Sims are here. And we're glad again to have you with us. San Diego's second possession of the game. And that is Ryan Matthews for about five. Well, you need to take advantage of the fact that you know your offensive line, but watch this play action fake. You got a pulling right tackle. That really gets the defense thinking. Shilly, number 70, making a start today off the practice squad. Good job of pulling outside and getting it done. And the Chargers trying to be a little creative on the last run at an unbalanced line, trying to get this Bears defense a lot of looks and to help out the offensive line. On second and five, running it again and ducking under for a couple. That is Ryan Matthews trying to see if they can run the football they have here at the early going with all of those changes on the offensive line. Well, North Turner told us yesterday it's not going to be easy, but be more conservative in his play calling. He's got, he told his quarterback, Phillip Rivers admits it, he's got to be conservative in his decision making and they got to watch the clock and try to shorten the football game if possible. Yeah, they've done that so far. Third down and four. Rivers lobs it. Jackson has it. Pass 
perfectly thrown, but there is a flag. And it's in the secondary. And it looks like it's going to negate a 24-yard gain. There is no offensive pass interference as the walk occurred within the line of scrimmage, right at the line of scrimmage. First down. So the play will hold up. Rivers ran in there, made an appeal, and there's no flag. There it is. Brown is at the line of scrimmage. Vincent Brown, 86, came down. I didn't even see the contact. So I don't know if you saw, Jim. It looked like it was barely it was any at all. They were trying to get a rub or a pick, whatever you want to say. If there are legal ways to do it. I did not see the contact, and since it was at the line of scrimmage, they picked up the flag. A good job by the officials. And now the ball rests at the Bears' 44. Tossing it over to Hester. And Hester is brought down by Briggs, but it's another first down. How about the overtime game? Cowboys and Redskins, JB has the story. On the foot of the Cowboy. And I'll tell you, Graham Gano missed a 52-yarder, but Dan Bailey makes a 39-yard field goal in overtime, and the Dallas Cowboys sneak out a 27-24 win. Third straight win for the Cowboys. Back to Jim and Phil. Ooh, and it was a hard-fought one. Thank you, fellas. Romo throwing for three touchdowns today, but again, that missed field goal made it a rather short field for Dallas to take over at the 42 and go on to win it with the Bailey field goal. We'll see them on Thanksgiving hosting the Miami Dolphins. First down carry, Matthews bounces outside, there is a flag. And it had gone for five yards. He loses the hands, hands to the face. Number 66 to the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Still first down. Jeremy Clary called for that again. The Cowboys will host. How about this? The hot Miami Dolphins, who won their third straight game earlier today. They manhandle Buffalo 35 to 8. And of course, a special holiday edition of the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Be coming your way 3:30 Eastern time. Look forward to sharing the holiday with all of you down in Dallas. First and 20, and they go back to Hester, and no. The Bears say, you're not going to fool us twice. That's Roach coming up, along with Adonijay, and a loss of five. Well, the Bears' defense getting the field. Nick Roach, 53, they're in a zone defense. He is reading it all the way, not fooled. And when you're a linebacker, watch those offensive linemen. When one on a pass starts to pull, then you know most likely screen outside. What a trio of linebackers the Bears have. A lot of pressure put on them to play in space, to make the tackles on the run plays, to defend the pass, and all three, Erlacher, Briggs, Roach, can get it done. Second and 25. thrown wide of Randy McMichael, so a drive that had a lot of promise. Well, you it said it. Got a bogged mistake, down. Jim. You bogged down first by a penalty, and then that five-yard loss on the screen. So that's Rivers' first incompletion right there. Well, you'll be giving away your All-Iron Award on Thanksgiving Day. Some of the winners through the years. Romo's done it the last two times we've been in Dallas. Tom Brady a year ago off a big performance in Detroit. Here we go, third down. Third and 25. They go draw Tolbert. Only to the 44, give him four. Well, that's just San Diego's way of saying, let's just don't make a mistake. It's not about field position. If you're going to throw it on third and long, at midfield is the place to do it. Well, what will they do with Hester? Well, Lovey Smith said when he's back there on punts, I forget everything. I turn and watch Devin Hester. He's not the only one. 
Signals fair catch at the nine. Cyphers gets it done. So, 3-3. Three, three. Late in the first quarter here at Soldier Field. That was a 34-yard punt by Cyphers. Bears will have it at the nine when we come back. Thursday on TBS, you can see why TV Guide calls person of interest a must-see mystery. Michael Emerson, Jim Caviezel, the movie star. They'll be in the new hit drama, Person of Interest Thursday, only CBS. Well, they've controlled the return game so far. San Diego has. Alas, the Bears have their third drive of the game. Average starting position is their own 15. This is actually from the nine now. And that's Forte for two. Well, this San Diego defense, the one thing they want to do today play great run defense of course everybody does they look at the game how can we win stop the Bears from running it and if we make Jake Cutler throw it enough they think well maybe at least we have a chance of him being wild and we can get some turnovers Greg Minuski the defensive coordinator played 12 years in the league he's a linebacker with Washington Minnesota they're after one here 3-3 three, three at Soldier Field NFL on CBS is sponsored by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. And by E-Trade, investing unleashed. Yeah, a little Bears football. There's the owner, the daughter of the legendary George Hallis, Virginia McCaskey. Alpha Bear Hallis. And that's Cutler throwing a dangerous pass, and it's incomplete. That was going to Bennett. Well, those are the plays they have really made work over the last couple games. The difference with the San Diego Chargers today, when you do those play action passes and throw them over the middle, is the fact that it's going to be man to man coverage, so somebody's going to be chasing you. Well, Bennett, you know, the last couple of weeks, uh, He's been wearing those orange spikes. Got fined for it. So now there's just a lot of orange and a little black. Yeah. And if he would have worn again today, he would not have been allowed on the football field. So it's not even about the money. You want to play, take him off. Cutler, deep ball knocks. And is there a flag? No. Feet got tangled up for a moment. Crowd was holding its breath, anticipating the flag might come out, but it doesn't. That was Jammer on the coverage. Well, Johnny Knox got the speed. We know that going down the field, and it is incidental uh, tripping the with the feet. It's just good coverage by Quentin Jammer. But you and I talk about it all the time. Keep throwing it deep when you get the chance. Catch it. Incompletion, pass interference. That's about all that happens on long throws down the sideline. Patrick Manley will snap it back to Podlish. It's the second three and out for the Bears. And Creighton lets that one go. This will be a big number for Potlish. Give him 54 yards on the punt. in this game and San Diego's had the field position edge so far no, no, no. play a clean game it has been a mistake prone season for sure giving the football away more than any team in the league 21 times it's Matthews running into Erlacher and there were others there as well Tonight on 60 Minutes, you didn't vote for him, but he controls the fate of your taxes. Plus, backstage with Taylor Swift. That's tonight only CBS. And they've committed at least two giveaways in five consecutive games. Got to go back 10 years in the franchise record books since they went through as sloppy a stretch as that. Got a second and ten after no gain for Matthews. Well, you got to adapt to your environment, Jim. The Chargers have not done that. 
Pass over to Vincent Brown, the rookie out of San Diego State for eight. You talk about adapting yep. and adjusting. That's one thing on the other side. Chicago has done very effectively this year. Chicago did it with their offense. They pulled back. They run the football more. They, they said, we can't lay Jay Cutler keep getting hit, keep guys in the protect. Now the San Diego Chargers have to do the same thing. So North Turner knows it. Be careful with the football. Don't let your ego get in the way. If you got to win 13 to 10, then you play that style. Third and two. Open Tolbert, and he's going to have the first, even with the good tackle by Brandon Merriweather. It's a three-yard gain and a first. And that's that's just a good example there. Philip Rivers so far in the game, the play calls, the design, his decisions. All smart, conservative, and, and the biggest thing of all, we haven't even got a chance to talk about it. A little pick play to the outside, third and short. Tolbert, very good receiver. Merriweather with the speed to make the tackle. But you can't let Julius Peppers, Israel Adonage, those guys start hitting your quarterback and ruin the game. Yes, Phil. And again, that quarterback being protected by really a whole new look oh, offensive yeah. line, which gets a little jumpy this time with Jeremy Clary. Well start, 66 day offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. One thing this Chargers team has done over the last four games, the losing streak, before the ball is snapped, that is 19 penalties before the ball is snapped. That is, that is something. Look at that. Count today, five games. First and 15. 53, fire it here, fire it. They send out Matthews to the bottom of the screen. He's waiting there for the pass. Cuts back to the middle and able to sneak past a couple of defenders and pick up 10. Well, we've seen it. That's I think that is three or four screens so far. Look at Julius Peppers, 90, he jumped the left tackle, Dombrowski, but another screen to the outside, a different formation for the San Diego Chargers. Trying to keep that Chicago Bear defense off balance, and again, take the pressure off the offensive line. Matthews becomes the sixth different San Diego player to catch a pass. Second and five from the 50, yeah, look at this play by Henry Melton on Matthews. In on him right away and sets him back five yards. Uh, it's hard. I know everybody's heard the story a lot of times. Number 69, Henry Melton coming around the block and getting in the backfield. A running back from the University of Texas. Hey, just got so big, they finally said, put your hand on the ground. <laughs> but he's learning to be an uh, interior defensive lineman in the NFL. What a difference in his play from last year to this year. Yeah, he scored 16 rushing touchdowns before Mac Brown down there in Austin moved him over to the other side. Here's third and 10, and it's Tolbert, and there's another nice piece of tackling. That's Corey Graham coming up and chopping up the play after a five-yard pickup. Well, nothing wrong with that series for the Chargers. They just got to... When they get a negative play, they cannot overcome. So the, the loss for four or five yards on the run ruins the play calling and what they're going to do. So again, it's Hester with that highest career punt return average in history. Ready for a chance. And he feels it at the nine. Here goes Hester. Hester got the edge. And does exactly what they were concerned with all week long down in San Diego. Runs it back 37 before Stuckey was able to end it. This was Hester on Hester for a moment. Jacob right there missed it for San Diego. And Devin takes off near the 50. We're back here in Chicago. The Bears trying to keep pace with the Lions who already won today in a shootout over Carolina behind Stafford's five touchdown throws. And Green Bay, which won. Again, to go to 10-0. Here is Forte. Hasn't had uh, much to talk about so far. That's a pickup of four. Picks up 131 on the ground today. He'd have 1,000 yards on the season. Well, it, we talked about it, Jim. San Diego, 
It's all about this. Get up there, tackle, tackle, tackle. What Greg Minuski said, let's get it done. Force them to throw the ball. They believe at least, like we said, maybe they can make the play in the passing game on the defensive side. Monte, another handle and backed up. Maybe able to scratch out a yard. So that's the kind of tackling you're talking about, Cam Thomas that time. And you, there's nothing, you can't beat hustle in the NFL and be in discipline. <laughs> and Greg Minuski yesterday, his, his whole body language was like that. But look at the guys on the defensive side. And it, this is what I like. There's Cam Thomas. I don't see one guy two yards in the backfield, one at the line of scrimmage, one going upfield trying to rush the passer. They look much more in unison today. And, you know, just the way I described it there, just think about that. You've got everybody at a different level where it creates big running lanes. And that's what's been happening to this defense. Third and five. Trying to crash in on Cutler. He's got the time, and Williams unable to reel that one in. There is a flag down, and that ball suspended into the air for a moment. I thought Weddle might get there to make the pick. It's going to be against the Bears. Eagerly the hands, hands in the face. Number 67 in the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So they'll decline it. Force him to punt it. Right guard, Spencer, to your right. 67. Oh, yes, got that hand way up there. Against Tommy Harris, the ex-Bear. So Podlish back out. That is the third three and out for Chicago. Unable to capitalize at all on the great return by Hester. 37-yard run back. Changes field position, though as Creighton watches this one, and it is covered downfield, as it should be by Corey Graham. 46 yards by Adam Podlish, and Graham is there to finish it off. Backed up to the three, San Diego starts this next drive. the middle for maybe a yard that's Hester we're talking about all those turnovers and giveaways on San Diego's part remember the Bears are the second best in the league at takeaways only uh, one fewer than San Francisco coming into the week 20 takeaways on the season including 12 in the last four weeks four wins on those last four weeks they got Tony Mould just Tony Maul just signed this week on the offensive line at right guard now for the Chargers. Number 75. Rivers hit when he threw it. And Roach, the former practice squad player in San Diego, was in on that coverage. Uh, here's why we've made such a big deal. Look to the top of the screen. Julius Peppers, Dombrowski. Oh, my gosh. It is just a race to the quarterback. Israel Adonage is there, too. And Phillip Rivers, you can't step up against this pressure because these guys are good enough to push, get off the blocks, and get you even when you try to step up in the pocket. Even the Blues brothers calling for a big play here by the Bears defense. Outside is Tolbert on third and nine. And I don't know about that spot, but they rule him almost a full yard short of it. Major Wright and Tim Jennings were the one on the tackle. Let's see if it was a good spot or not. not a nice run. Third and long. You're the Bears. You have to look for these running plays. Knee was down. That was a good spot, Jim. That knee hit the ground, and then he reached forward. See if Norb Turner wants to challenge that. I don't think it's worth it. He's going to put it away. Fourth and one, Cypress. This is very returnable. Hester from the 47. Hester able to escape the first attempt. Hester going to the sideline. There's a flag thrown as he scoots past Cypress. And this is probably coming back.
Well, that happened right in front of us. I did not see the illegal block. During the return, holding number 32 of the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. So that was a 43 yard return. And it's going to be brought back. Cost him 31 yards on the penalty against Bell. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by National Car Rental. Go National, go like a pro. The HTC Resound, the only phone with built-in Beats audio. And by the Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Well, Jeff Triplett called it on number 34. That had a scrambling for the uh, roster because there is no such number. It was on Bell, number 32. Yeah. See the jersey being pulled. It was pretty dramatic. Barber in the backfield. They fake to him. Cutler on first down from the 41. Rose on the run, and he's got Earl Bennett for a big gainer inside the 20. Mark him at the 15. Gain to 26. A lot of ways to get Jay Cutler to throw the football down the field. Keep the tight end in. Kellen Davis. There's Roberta Garza pulling out in front. And everybody thinks he's going to throw back to the inside. And when you try to analyze the throwing motion of Jay Cutler, all you can analyze is it. well, it gets there in a hurry. Because it's unconventional. It's his style. It works. One of the best throwers in the NFL. He's got Farber. One outside, Barber inside the 10, and Barber fights for it to the five and near a first. We Broke watched, away from spikes. We watched practice yesterday. You turned to me, and what did you say? He well, looks fast, doesn't he? Marion Barber is looking fast. Well, because he has a different role now. He's taking less reps in practice. He's getting hit less, and it shows. When he comes in the game, he knows what his job is. Is That's to take on the hits, the tackles, the break them. And it's uh, he's done a terrific yeah. job here in Chicago and so far. It was enough for the first at the hey. five, first and goal. He stays hey. in. Cutler looking in trouble and able to shake off the sack and throw it away. That was LeBoy who was in the backfield trying to bring down Cutler for a big 10-yard loss. Yeah, it was uh, good pressure. The Bears thinking, hey, we can do some of these play actions. Jay Cutler not getting the time. Marion Barber not able to get to Travis LeBoy, and they're doing an excellent job. They are, how about this footwork by Jay Cutler, though? Goes unnoticed, his footwork and how mobile he is, but pressuring outside in. Don't let him get outside the pocket. 51, That's where 51. he is Bring trouble in. for a defense. Second and goal. Still with Barber. There's Barber. With the carry, and Barber scoots. They're going to rule him down. Was he pushed down by contact, or did he trip over his own feet? That's what they're discussing. If it was you and I running, Jim, it'd say, well, we tripped over our own feet. But, you know. Done that a few times. Yeah, cool. Down by contact is the call. Let's Short. see the truck. Yep, yeah, there it is. All it takes is just a touch. And that football, that's the big thing. It came wow. out, too. That would have been a fumble for sure. In fact, they mark it outside of the one. The fact that he fumbled, that could have been a touchdown if the Bears wanted the challenge. It wasn't inside of two minutes. It was not fourth down. Third and goal. Barber. Near it, got it, touchdown, Chicago. I was getting ready to say that's why you challenge inside the one. So tough to score down in here. But a good job by Marion Barber just getting low and winning the war. When you're lower than the tackler, hard to get them down right away. Oh, boy, it's tough there, too, Jim. That was close. Well, every touchdown, of course, has to be verified. That's right. So you don't have to worry about challenging. Well, they've already gone ahead and put the ball in play. It didn't take them long to yeah. send the word down that 
The touchdown is validated. Got good eyes up there. And Gold makes it 10-3. Barber. They say he's across for the game's first touchdown. A five-play drive, the big 26-yard pass to Earl Bennett, and then the final 15 yards handled by Marion Barber. And Robbie Gold to boot it to Richard Goodman. Actually, he's coming over to Hester, who is the up back, and fields it at the goal line, and Hester with a big collision with Chicago's to Seco at the 22. Four minutes to a first half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by American Express. Support your community by making the pledge to shop small at a local business this Small Business Saturday, November 26th. 10-3, Chicago in a fast-moving game at Soldier Field. Mercy! San Diego has not reached Chicago's side of the field in this quarter. Oh, that was a tackle. Down the field they go, and it's Jackson. And yes, they do step onto the Chicago side of the turf after that big pass play. And Ryan Matthews picked up Lance Briggs on the blitz and picks up 32. Watch the pickup, running back. That's why I said that's a tackle. He took that right arm and put it completely around him and got him. Nice double move down the field by Vincent Jackson against Tillman. And that was a nice throw by Phillip Rivers. A little bit of an underthrow. Did it on purpose. Big play for the San Diego Chargers. Biggest play of the day for San Diego. That's a 24 and a 32 yard <laughs> hook up with Jackson in this one. And just throws it incomplete at the feet of McMichael is they were storming in after him, including Israel Adonage. Well, when you are throwing a lot of screens like the San Diego Chargers are, here comes the blitz again. So it's man-to-man -man coverage. That's what you want when you have a screen. But Nick Roach on the outside, 53, ruins it. But once you do a lot of them, they are going to figure it out. The defensive linemen go, well, we're not that dang good up front. They're letting this go quickly for a reason. Second and 10, Bears 46 yard line. Matthews. Tries to make a couple of shifty moves, but still loses a yard with Major Wright there to bring it down. Tuesday on CBS, Poppy Montgomery and Dylan Walsh in TV's number one new show, Unforgettable. All new episode Tuesday, only CBS. One thing I do notice, San Diego, Jim, when you watch the game, they better keep mixing it up. Run, pass, screens, draws, because in obvious situations, they are getting overpowered by the defensive line of the Chicago Bears. They empty it out and send Tolbert wide to the right on third and 11. And that's back to Jackson. He makes another catch over the shoulder at the 20 and takes it inside the 10. Out of bounds near the nine. Actually spotted at the eight. They Frank. got they got exactly what they wanted. A blitz, man-to-man -man coverage, and the throw down the field. Phillip Rivers can get it out of his hands fast when it's a blitz. That's why inside Vincent Jackson, all that field to work with. Nice throw and catch. Right over Tillman for 39. And that's well designed again. At the football at the eight with 225 to go in the half. Jackson with 96 yards on four catches and a timeout called by San Diego. First and goal to go for the Chargers when we come back. All right, San Diego's offense coming to life. A couple of big throws from Rivers to Jackson. First and goal from the eight. Rivers, they're after him. Gets it away and it's dropped. 
Should have been caught by Jackson. Nice footwork in the pocket by Phillip Rivers. It's collapsing there around him and good job of dropping that arm and throwing it sidearm and that was perfect. Vincent Jackson, maybe it surprised him. But real quick, if I was the Chicago defense, I would not blitz Phillip Rivers. Play zone, let your four defensive linemen rushing, give them a half a second more to see if they can get to the quarterback and then hit him. When you blitz him, it makes it easy. He just catches it and throws it to one guy. Let's we'll see what Marinelli does with his defense here. Second and goal. Rivers now forced to roll out and just lobs it through the back of the end zone. He was being run after. Paya was after him. Well, that's what it was that time, Jim. They played coverage, and you can see that that was obvious. How fast did the defensive lineman push it and make it happen? Coverage back. You got the extra defenders inside. Two safeties in the end zone with Erlacher. Tolbert flanking the quarterback, Rivers. Third and goal. From the eight. Even, even, even. Uh. Rivers. End zone. Touchdown, San Diego. Antonio Gates. I'll say this. Good job by Antonio Gates. Of course, the quarterback, Phillip Rivers, the offensive line. They are just trying to hang in there. And it's not open to the inside. That's what happens. He works back out. And Lance Briggs lost sight of him. They got Brian Erlacher inside. Briggs outside. Nice movement by Antonio Gates. That is Gates' third touchdown of the season. Comes on a third and goal from the eight. Rivers 150th career touchdown pass. And Novak ties it at 10. Follow the eyes of the quarterback. He's got Antonio Gates in his sights. Nice look off. Coming up, the Sprint Halftime Report with JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, Coach Cower, and again, Arian Foster, the Houston Texans star. He's been in there all day long, and he's going to stick around as well for halftime on the Sprint Halftime Report. Now the Bears well, have given up more touchdowns this season to tight ends than any other team. That's now eight times the tight end has beaten them for a touchdown on the season. Well, a lot of the coverages they play, Jim, they're forcing you to throw it to the tight end. So teams are doing it, and they're still making it happen. Johnny Knox. Again, not Hester this time. Set him up in excellent positions. He takes off. And that was Weddle over there, the last man standing. We reach the two-minute warning off a 53-yard kick return by Johnny Knox. Coming out of the two-minute warning, and the Bears will have full allotment of timeouts and begin the drive. At the 44 of San Diego, they've got 143 return yards today, kick and punt return yardage, and Knox is the latest one to send them up in prime position. Jump pass complete to Forte as they were coming in low on Cutler. Picks up no gain. Well, true, the Bears' offensive line, it's improved. They've changed their football team, but still, Still, in obvious passing situations, they have a hard time protecting Jay Cutler. Sam Hurd has come in as an extra receiver in the slot to the right, and Barnes trying to make a move on Cutler, who fires it down the field, Bennett has it! Bennett to the 10, right over the outstretched arms of Dante Hughes. Well, you got to keep Jay Cutler in the pocket. It's great to get pressure on him, but once he moves, it's never a short throw. Dante Hughes, excellent protection. Jay Cutler sees it, throws it a little bit back shoulder. Dante Hughes can't make the play. Got a bear down. It's Chris Spencer. And he had moved into the right guard position again. 
With the Bears having all those issues on the line as well, and he's able to at least half jog to the sideline. It's a big deal for the Bears. They are very worried as they played this game today. They were kind of like, man, you know, we can't afford to lose another lineman. Frank Omiel will come in for him. There he is, 68. 68. They lost, you, of course, Jim, you know, Chris Williams, first round pick from Vanderbilt a couple years ago. IR this week with a wrist injury. Right. Gabe Karimi also IR this week after a knee injury. First round pick. They got charged a timeout as they had the 10 to Spencer. Hunter's pass incomplete, and he was trying to hit Sanzenbacher, who would come in, the rookie. Eric Weddle putting the pressure on Cutler. Well, the Chargers didn't lie to us. No, I don't want to say it that way. They told us the truth. They were going to be aggressive, and that's it. You put all the pressure on their corners, who they thought last week played some of their, maybe their worst games of the year. Spencer is back in after just sideline for one play. 117 to go in the half. Second and goal. In zone. Pivot. Touchdown Bears with the flag. Earl Bennett becoming. Jay Cutler's favorite target, former Vanderbilt teammate of his. Well, two things. It was the flag on, and was it a catch? He leaves the hands, hands in the face prior to the pass. Number 20, releasing. And penalties decline. We're going to the play as a touchdown. There you go. Bottom of your screen, hit to the face mask. Nice move by Earl Bennett right away. Ball comes out at the end of this, though. Well, this will be reviewed. He catches it. He crossed the end zone. He has the football. Oh, it comes loose as he's hitting the ground. Contact taking him to the ground. That football is loose. So it's being reviewed upstairs. We'll be right back. Still no word from upstairs, but this is something we've seen develop through the years. You got to hold on to it all the way to the ground. You're tackled to the ground, which he is right here on the contact yeah, it's by Weddle. He, he's losing as he goes to the ground. That's the shot that we had. You see the ball moving, then he hits and it falls. It's going to be incomplete. There was a penalty on the play, so if it is, in fact, first. ruled an incompletion, right. they'll have a first and goal at the five right. after the illegal contact. Well, as you see, Earl Bennett catch the pass. When he's hit, the football is coming loose almost right away. And because of the contact, took him to the ground, then the football comes out completely. Now Bennett, he knows he didn't hold on to it. Triplets reviewed this one for quite a while. After review, early on the field is reversed. The receiver was off the ground, caught the ball one foot down, then was hit and went to the ground and lost possession. It is an incomplete pass. However, there is an illegal hands to the face. Number 20 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced five yards from the previous spot. It'll be first and goal from the five yard line. Well, that's the way the rule was written. Well, the, the, the hit was so good. And you know, too, the thing about the play, the San Diego Chargers had the perfect defense on to stop. Earl Bennett on that pattern, but it was such a good move at the line of scrimmage. It, was, it got him wide open, just couldn't hang on after the hit. All right, so there's still a first and goal at the five with a minute and 12 to go in the first half. They're going to go empty here, sending Forte to the left side. 
That led to the end zone incomplete. Forte was the target. Diggs covering. Something similar happened in that Cincinnati-Baltimore game today. Grisham made some acrobatic catch, but as he came to the ground, lost it, yes. Contact to the ground. Yeah, we saw this play while it was happening today. Tough play for Matt Forte, a back shoulder throw to a running back in the end zone. Second and goal from the five. Forte with the run. Right into a whole wall, maybe a yard. Bears have two timeouts, but no need to exercise one right here. Again, the sprint halftime report. He is coming up. And JB and the crew will take you through all the early action, including the Cowboys' overtime victory and the Dolphins' lopsided win over Buffalo. By the way, the long snapper for the Bears, Patrick Manley, has been taken to the locker room. Apparent knee injury. Klutz would be filling in for him. Third and goal. And zipping in for a touchdown. That was Cutler firing it in there to Davis for the score. Four-yard completion to Kellen Davis. Pass protection. It's awesome. He looks to his right, wants to throw it, doesn't like it, reshuffles and waits. And then in between two defenders, Oliver and Dante Hughes, neither one can react to the speed of the football. The fullback, Klutz, comes in, pinch hitting for Manley. Good on the inside, but fine, and it leads to the point after. Bobby Gold has now made 221 consecutive point after touchdowns. Klutz contributing to the cause. Kellen Davis working in the end zone again, just like on the other end. The initial coverage is very good, but when you stop to look at the quarterback, you lose the feel. Where is the tight end? Davis sneaks in behind him for the touchdown, and as you talk about it, Jim, the scores, San Diego is going to go in at halftime, and they're going to talk about special teams. Stop the returns, and this game would be different. Big Cutler excited, Kellen Davis, six foot seven tight end. Pretty easy dunk for him. And that's another touchdown drive for the Bears under 45 yards. Both of their touchdown drives inside of 45. And 20 seconds to go in the half. That one popped about six yards deep. Goodman up the middle. Goodman caught from behind. Nice piece of tackling there by Stells. Look at the weekend coverage here. Arkansas and LSU on Thanksgiving weekend. That's a huge game Friday at 2.30 Eastern time. Alabama and Auburn. And, of course, with the new... BCS rankings and everything, it looks like it might be a one, a two, and a three in the coverage coming up. Yeah, I would expect Arkansas to be number three, Alabama to move up to number two. Yeah, look at the play selection. Equally attempted. And they're going to come out shotgun here from the 38 to 15 seconds. Down the field, and that was over the head of Vincent Brown. It was a good job by Goodman bringing it out of the end zone. No matter how far you kick it into the end zone, the time on the clock, you have like a free play. So he took advantage of it. And now the Chargers, this is the time you go, let's take a little bit of a chance. And, uh, you try to get a long field goal attempt out of this. And Yeah, the Chargers, they've lost four straight games all by close margins, one score margins, but they've had big halftime deficits, double-digit deficits the last three games. Well, this game, Jim, they've done a huh. wonderful job of not turning it over. That's what it is. Stay in the game. Rivers to Gates. 
tackled, and ball came out at the end. And the whistle first, though, with three seconds to go. And a timeout, San Diego. That goes for 26, Rivers to Gates. That's exactly what you wanted. You get the good return, throw it down the field. You knew the coverage. One, two, feet on the ground. Well, from here, it'll be about a 55-yard field goal try. No question about Gates being down. Yeah, that's what I was just watching a couple replays to make sure he's not down because it's a clear recovery if it was a fumble by the Chicago Bear defense. So Novak will attempt the long win on the last play of the half. His career long is 52. I watched him during warm-ups just because of the wind on this field. And from this way, kicking to the end zone he's kicking into, he was making it pretty easily from 53 yards. Now he's got a couple more on top of that. 55 it is. And a whistle first. Timeout Chicago before the snap. So they do the last second timeout to the Bears. Well, I'm not sure why. Maybe Lovey Smith was just trying to freeze the kicker. Let's make him go through the mechanics of doing it a second time. Well, the kick was no good, but of no concern as he'll get another chance to reload here. Well, I think the big thing is, Jim, now he, he got a chance to check out the footing. Slipped a little. By the way, Hester has been brought in. He's right at the back of the end zone. Won't be a factor, though, because this kick, oh, it hits the crossbar. You said 53. It would have been good from 53, Phil. And he hit it perfectly. You can tell by the spin. It had power. It's going right down the middle. Hester jumps at this, too. Which would be legal if he jumped over the top and knocked it back into the field of play. You can do that. Novak begging for it. Well, that's the end of the first half with the score Chicago 17 and San Diego 10. We'll be back with the Sprint Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. San Diego will be receiving the second half kickoff, but first let's take a look at the NFL Mobile Recap presented by Verizon. This is Cutler zipping it in there to Kellen Davis' tight end for the touchdown. That's the difference in the game at the moment. With Chicago up seven. There have been no sacks and no giveaways in this game to this point. So again, it'll be Robbie Gold to Richard Goodman, who had that nice return late in the second quarter. Almost helped the cause as San Diego attempted the long field goal that hit the crossbar. Just across the 20 to the 23 Stells on the tackle. Again, uh, no giveaways in this game. What are you looking for here in the second half? Well, I think a lot of the same stuff, Jim. I think the San Diego Chargers, all the injuries, all the good players in their football team that are out, they've had a tremendous adjustment. North Turner, what did he tell us yesterday? My special teams, it hasn't hurt our special teams. Return yards were the difference in the first half. The Bears, they had them. The San Diego Chargers didn't. That is Bird, Brent. Bird down on the field for the Chargers. Ron Bird, who was a rookie out of Texas Tech. And with the injury, we'll take a break here at Soldier Field. So rookie Ron Bird was able to walk off under his own power. And the Chargers ready to get 
the first snap of the third quarter underway with a two tight end formation shifting around McMichael and Matthews with an early collision by Lance Briggs and a loss of a yard Lance Briggs does a wonderful job, 55. He diagnoses the play right away, just shoots the gap, comes in there. They're trying to follow the tight end. McMichael up into the line of scrimmage, but can't get away from him. Both Nick Roach forces it inside, Briggs finishes it. Makes it second and 11. Matthews, nine carries, 27 yards. They're going to move Matthews over to the right side of the quarterback. Julius Peppers over there. Able to freeze him as Rivers goes long ball. Jackson's open and has another big catch. That's Vincent Jackson for 47 yards. All coverage, the San Diego Chargers, they say we are really good against this type. You can see Tillman is off and Conte, 47, doesn't read and react fast enough. Look at, look at Charles Tillman. He's expecting the safety. Once he goes inside it all, it's your man when he goes down the field. Conti's there in time, just does not locate the football. Jackson now five catches, 143 yards. Four of them over 20 yards. The Chargers set up at the 30 of the Bears. And it's Matthews, and there's Briggs again making another play. That's two. Quick sticks by Briggs here in this quarter and a loss of a couple. Well, Lance Briggs is the unsung hero of the NFL. Number 55, look, he's at the center. Gets away from Nick Hardwick, gets outside. That's what he is so fast, can run sideline to sideline. I've talked about him and the other linebackers. The way they play, they have to cover a lot of space in the passing game and still be able to stop the run game. And Jim, we heard it from the head coach. Rod Marinelli, how well he is playing in every phase of football. We're seeing it here. It's faster this year than he was last year. Second down and 12, and again, Rivers airing it out. End zone and incomplete. There is a flag back at the 10-yard line. He was going for Vincent Brown. Tim Jennings on the coverage. Pass interference, number 26 in the defense. Automatic first down. Again, they were going for Benson Brown, who's the starter today with Malcolm Floyd still out with a hip injury. Top of the screen, nice double move. There's the hit down the field. That is a good call. If Tim Jennings doesn't hit him, Jim, that is a touchdown. North Turner learned when he first started getting into coaching, Ernie Zampezi. Double moves, go down the field, attack deep. He's done it his whole career, and they still do it well. That's a 21-yard penalty. That's Matthews off right tackle, and he's able to somehow find two. And not a whole lot there. Adonage was plugging that hole. Well, I, the reason I said we talked about early in the first half, there's Jake Cutler waiting his turn. If San Diego could just run it or make the Bears think about the run game, that gave them single coverage outside. And so every play that we've seen down the field, they all have one common thing. It was man-to-man -man coverage down, the, down there. San Diego doing a good job against them. Second and eight, they can pick up the first at the one. Hester wide to the left. Get over there where Julius Peppers is. A little reinforcement, no, it's a draw with Matthews. Scooting ahead down to the five. And again, it's Adonage on the tackle, picks up four. Why they move him to the left side? Let's go to the guy that's the pass rusher. Peppers goes up the field. Should be a window over here, but he couldn't have got there because Haye is there waiting on it. So good read by Matthews going inside. Third and four. Jackson, touchdown San Diego. Was in front of Charles Tillman for the five-yard touchdown grab, Vincent Jackson. Last week, 
Charles Tillman, Tim Jennings played. Lovey Smith said the best game of two corners that I've ever seen. Oh, that was some nice little stutter move by Jackson to the outside. And he had to hold the football that time, Phillip Rivers. And look how close it was. Julius Peppers almost gets there. After catching just one ball last week against the Raiders for the second time this season, a one-catch game. Jackson having a monster game here today, and Novak ties it. Chargers have now scored on their opening drive of the second half for the fourth consecutive game, and now they've tied it at 17. Well, Vincent Jackson, he has been quite the story here. 47-yard pass play to get him down there, and then the final five yards from Rivers mm. to tie the game. That 47-yard pass was the first throw by Rivers in 198 passes. It went for over 40. And there is Hester, ready to let loose again. Send this to the two and up the head. It's Hester, another fine run back. There's another flag down. Another flag thrown as he loses his footing across the 40. Front Bird was still back out there. He had been shaking up early. In return, early. holding number 20 in return team. 10 yard penalty, still first down. That's called on Stelz. Jim, let's look at the touchdown. Here's Antonio Gates. He's going to clear the inside. The back runs to the flat. That creates space. And then watch Vincent Jackson go up the field and give that little wiggle that creates time and space. So he does it. Now look how much bigger the window is for Phillip Rivers to throw into. And a good job being big. Stay in front of Charles Tillman and get the touchdown. Well designed. And that is truly about one-tenth of a second in front or before Julius Peppers. So that penalty wipes out another fine return by Hester. And from the 17, it's Forte right up ahead. And we've got an update. Let's send it back to James Brown in New York. Ground and pound, Bill. Yeah, no, uh, no hangover from last week's loss in New Orleans. Michael Turner, four yards out. They look sharp, 20-3 to three over Tennessee. Hard, bruising run, 12 carries, 80 yards, and a touch by Michael. Back to Jim Nance and Phil Sims. All right, guys, thank you. If Turner could only have picked up about a foot last week in overtime on that controversial go for it. On fourth and a foot against New Orleans. So, Barber is the running back on second and five, and he's hit right away by Barnes, and then the second man to bring him down is Spikes. Just a yard gain. Jim, this defensive front for the Chargers, give them some credit. Where's it been all year? Cam Thomas inside just muddling it up. And legit, there he is. And then to Keel Spikes, anytime the defensive fronts, Antoine Barnes in the backfield, when the defensive linemen have a good day, the linebackers should have a great day. Because that means they're not getting blocked. So it's a third down here for the Bears. Third and four. They shift Barber over to a wing on the right. In on Cutler quickly and able to get it away at the last moment to Williams who makes the move for the first. Roy Williams with one move to pick up the first, and there's a player down. It's Jake Cutler. Hey. Jay Cutler able to throw with a defender on his legs. That's Antoine Barnes has him. Still strong enough. Throws off the back foot so well anyway. Gets it to Roy Williams. Oh, that's what happens. Yeah. Travis LeBoy hit him. Knee in the back of the head. And the knee actually jarred the helmet loose. And then Williams makes a move on Jammer, right, right. who allowed him to step around and pick up the first down. Actually picked up 11 in the first. And now coming out, throwing on first down. It's back to Williams again. Another completion, another first down. Right in front of Jammer for 12. Roy Williams back with Mike Marks. He was with him in Detroit. Mike March told me and he told us that he fits into this offense well because he's big. Johnny Knox takes the coverage underneath and look at that hole and Jake Cutler drives it in it. And the one thing you do, he can do, give him time, give him a little space. Jake Cutler doesn't need a big window 
to throw it down the field. Forte comes back in, but he shifts over wide to the left. Klutz is the running back behind Cutler. Going to throw again. Bust the middle. Three straight plays to Williams. All three going for first downs. 11 more for number 11. You know, Jim, we talk about the Chicago Bears receiving core. It just has speed. There's like five different types of receivers, which is great because every play is designed for a different skill set. And Roy Williams, you can tell by looking at him in the Mike Marks offense, he's in great shape, able to get down the field, and has definitely found his role in this offense. Found his role on this series, that's for sure. Three straight plays have come to him. Is it a fourth? Cutler down the field. Knox at the five, bounces off the hit, and is tackled at the one. There were enough chargers down there, you would think, to defend it, but Knox makes the play for 42 yards. Hard to defend it because it's so deep down the field. Jay Cutler, that's why he took so long, Jim. He looked down and he said, okay, throw it a little behind the receiver. They stack them, Johnny Knox, little double move, in, out, and up the sideline. Good coverage, but the throw was perfect right behind the defender and the receiver. Well, Kaysen was turned around for so long and not able to react in time to the ball coming in there. Cutler's thrown for 76 yards on this drive, set up first and goal. Forte, it's about halfway there. Well, really, there's just no way to defend, Jim, in this league with the rules, with the quarterbacks that can really throw it. Johnny Knox, that move. Now, we talked about Roy Williams. But Johnny Knox has got, like, the feet of a ballet dancer, and he can really slither and move. We've seen it in the returns. We saw it with the, the route. He just ran up the sideline. Barber in the backfield. So tough to stop. Man's Cutler up and over, and he's got the touchdown. Cutler with the keeper and the score. You know, you look back, big plays. Jay Cutler over the top. Nice job of waiting. Get some separation and jump. But how about you go back to the first, the third play of the drive, hanging in there and able to make a throw with somebody having a hold of your of your leg. Again, Manley, the long snapper who has uh, been the most tenured player in their history, most games, out with a knee, and that's Flux snapping it back to Potlish who gets it down to perfection and Gold drives it through. Cutler takes the final yard. And they take the lead by seven. Well, Jay Cutler, we saw him during the break over the sideline, still kind of shaking his head after being jolted in the back of the neck and stayed on the field to get the long pass play to Knox, set him up. Look at Gold at the last moment. Ball outside. Cutler has taken him down the field. Three straight drives now, leading the touchdowns for the Chicago Bears. Mm. Well, the Bears thought today, they, they, boy, they guess. It's amazing how the coaches always have a great feel of what's going to work and not, and how the other team's going to treat them. But Mike Mart said, today could be a day that we could throw it down the field and take a few more chances with the football because they believe they could protect Jay Cutler a little better. So you've got to make those evaluations. And of course, adjust as the game goes along. Second time, now you have to hold the football on the team. You know, Jim, earlier at the end of the first half, when Devin Hester was back, I was wrong. You cannot jump up and knock the football down. And it kind of makes sense. It would be like goaltending. So if you do it, the official still can award a field goal to the kicking team. Well, he jumped up there and never made any contact with it. The ball yes. hit the crossbar. Failed to get across. This is Goodman. He's got a little extra gear, doesn't he? That's yes, a 34-yard return. Jennings, who held the ball on the tee for gold. Jackson scored, but back to match it was Cutler. Go back in front by seven. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by TD Ameritrade. 
and by Hanes. Look great, feel great in the undershirt with the lay flat collar. So touchdown drive for each team here in the third quarter. And the Chargers from the 28. Go Matthews. Erlacher going after him. Ball is out. Matthews fumbled it. Picked up by the Bears. It's Tillman with the recovery. Erlacher forced it. Speed on defense and hustle. Brian Erlacher, 54. Look at it. Nobody can get to him to block the speed. Well, that, that fumble was caused outside. Tillman yeah, hit it, it out. Tillman, who has done this his whole career, forcing fumbles. Well, he's, that just shows you, hang in the football game, be tough. He's had a tough day covering the receivers down the field, but did his responsibilities against the run and maybe made the play that really turns this game around. He just punched it. Perfectly timed. Tillman forces it, recovers it, and the Bears are at the 37. And rolling out, looking downfield, and going underneath instead to Roy Williams again. 15 more for Williams. The plays on the last drive, the fact that Jay Cutler threw so many passes down the field, that has made the Charger defense that we better back up. And they did, still didn't stop the completion to Roy Williams. Here's a new stat for you. I like it. Attempts to force fumbles. That's what the Bears talk about. We don't talk about getting the, it's, are we making the attempts to try to strip, to do what we do, or we can do to get the turnovers. And Cutler fires it to the end zone, and caught by Knox where the feet in. Yes, they rule on the field. Touchdown, Chicago. That was unbelievable. It's, it's not only Knox's catch, which is just spectacular. Good coverage by Kaysan. You What are you going to do? Nothing you can do. But Jay Cutler getting the throw off was every bit as great. One, two, control, plays over. Touchdown. What an adjustment to the to the football. Both times, Knox with Kaysen covering. One setting him up at the one. And this one going for the score. And extra point is good. Didn't take long, did it? Two touchdowns in 64 seconds. The punch. And then going for the knockout. But it's a 14-point lead third quarter. Well, Johnny Knox making Abilene Christian alums around the country proud of his effort today. Sets up a touchdown here in the third, then catches one. And this will come out to the 20. Big boot by Robbie Gold. For more than 30 years, the must-see show, The Pros Watch. Unscripted, unrehearsed, and unpredictable always. With J.B., Phil, Chris, and Warren. Inside yep. the NFL Wednesdays on Showtime. You know, it'll be a great show this week. They're all going to tell you that. You know why? Well, because... I won't be on it. No, there yeah, you go. There you go. See, they'll all be giddy and proud of themselves. And, oh, it's great not having... Yeah, okay. But it's... It is what it is. That's good. And Mike Lombardi there providing all the inside scoop Somebody, around the league. That's right. Now you're going to be in Why Dallas getting set for the Thursday game. So we could hook you up by satellite if you want. First down. It is Rivers going screen to Tolbert. Melton chasing after him. Tolbert crashes ahead for 12 and a first. You know, excellent screen. Been a big part of the game today. You know, this to Chicago Bears, what a time to throw it. They say, okay, we're up now. we got a good lead. Let's rush the passer. And excellent job. Maul outside gets a good block. Nick Hardwick. Norv Turner said about today's game. He said, our stars have to play like stars through all these injuries. And, you know, they have. It's the fumble that really 
change the complexion of this whole thing. And Matthew stays on the sideline after coughing it up on the last series. Tolbert's in there. Pass to Jackson. He's got that secondary turned around, doesn't he? Out to the 50. 18 more for Vincent Jackson. Vincent Jackson right down the middle of the field. What a target to throw to. Even though the linebackers of the Bears are tall and long, they can't knock that down. And Julius Peppers, it is, he is right at the gate every play. Phillip Rivers knows it. He's done a, a, a tremendous job, Rivers, today. Catching it, making the decision, let it go. Matthews is back in. And it comes over to him for four. We've got an update. And James Brown joined by Coach Cowra with the update. Jake Locker in for the injured Matt Hasselbeck and... His first NFL touchdown, JB, right here to Nate Washington. On the move outside, Nate Washington will run after catch in uh, Tennessee. Back in this game, 20-10 in Atlanta. Two minutes left in the third period of play. Back to Jim Nance and Phil Sims. Okay, boy, how do they let him get away? So, first touchdown of the day for the Titans. Chargers trying to come back Byron, after Byron. surrendering two touchdowns in a little more than a minute. Good fake by Rivers. He's going back over to Gates. And Gates has the first down to the 35. Where he's pile driven by Major Wright after 11. Well, we talked about the stars. North Turner to win a game like this with the injured players who come through. And Vincent Jackson, what a day. And it is true. They talked about it. If you play a coverage where you stay off of him and let him run down the field with a free release, he is not good. He is great. We have seen that so far. Well, he has had some games this year, like this one, against New England, against Green Bay. 54, 54 Racking up huge numbers. First and 10. And Rivers goes back over to Tolbert, who slipped after the catch. And Erlacher finishes him off for no gain. Well, we talked so many times today. This defense is built on the front four, rushing the passer, and the back end, the linebackers and all that, have to do both, stop the run and defend the pass. How's that for a big linebacker? Phillip Rivers, the first time he was ever the starter, or the second game, I should say, of his career, it was a preseason game, he threw a pass over the middle, Erlacher intercepted, and he went, wow, and no idea. Yeah, he didn't realize how big Brian Erlacher was. We were here back in the preseason of 06. It's Tolbert in the Briggs for a couple. And how about Tony Maul and Steven Schilling? Maul just signed this week. Schilling off the practice squad. His first career game. They both are in there right now at guard. And, and again, Rivers has not been sacked in this game. It's, I'll tell you. It's a little bit of everything, Jim. It's, I give them tremendous credit. North Turner's helping them out every once in a while. But it's the play designs and play calls and Phillip Rivers playing the type of game, not give the defense energy by holding the football too long. Need to get to the 25 for a first. It's third and eight. Goes over to Tolbert. Catches the ball on his hip. And then takes it four yards short of the first at the 29. Oh, they're going to kick it. I said, maybe they'll go for the fourth down play. But it's a fake blitz. And the coverage down the field, very good. And I know Phillip Rivers is worried. Oh, my gosh. No, Look it's not good. Jackson. Vincent Jackson was turned loose. They made a mistake. The fake blitz. The Bears faked themselves out of it. Some were playing zone. Some were playing man-to-man. That is the end of the third quarter. 31-17 Chicago, and you're watching the NFL on CBS. Back here at Soldier Field, fourth quarter about to start with a field goal try coming up in a long one for Nick Novak, who in the same direction at the end of the first half, hit the crossbar, bounced back short from 55. 
This will be 48 yards. Cypress on the hold. Mike Wint sends it back, and the kick by Novak is good. Right down the middle. That's the lead to 11. 31 20. Novak delivers it from long distance, from 48. Eight play drive leading to a field goal by Novak. We were looking at that one play that looked like Jackson was wide open. You want to clarify that, though? Yes, because when I looked at it again, he was not open. So just to. Everybody goes, oh, well, Phillip Rivers missed a wide open guy. It's going to look like that a little bit, but the coverage was there. If he looked over there, I think they would have been the same to break it up. It's Hester back this time, getting the chance to run it out. And good man. He can run pretty briskly, too. Shoves him out of bounds at the 12, just a 16-yard run back. Well, let's look at it real quick. Vincent Jackson is here. He's going to run down the field here. It's a weak side zone. In other words, he's got the guy here. He is going to go over this way, the safety, but he reads the quarterback. See, he's over the top, and if Phillip Rivers would have looked right, he would have jumped on Vincent Jackson. So a little misleading. Phillip Rivers did the right thing that was major right back there at safety, and you're always taught. Well, if they roll to the right, look to the left. That's what Phillip Rivers did. Look at these last four possessions. All touchdowns. They'd have to go 88 yards this time to continue that streak. That's Klutz. The newly employed long snapper able to pick up nine on the little toss. You can stay in the game all season long with the NFL's new selection of mobile apps. Get unparalleled access to stats, fantasy news, and more. Go to NFL.com slash fantasy. You know, Tim, you're talking about, you were watching Clutch snap on the sideline, backup long snapper doing it, fullback blocking, special teams demon. If he was doing this at Thanksgiving, we'd give him a trophy. And this would be one of your award winners. Oh, a, step in, man. When it's needed, step in and get the job done. Butler has hit his last eight passes. He's going to pick up the first here with the handoff to Forte for about four. It's been a big half of football here for Jay Cutler. He's found Knox. He's found Williams. He's snuck it across himself. He got kicked in the back of the head, able to shake it off. This one set up a touchdown, his very own. And he's telling them, boy, I took the best they got, still got up. And through this. I don't think we've had a pass hit the ground in the second half. No, Both quarterbacks, yeah. perfect. It's, this is Chicago. Do they know where they're playing? <laughs> this is, come on. Supposed to be grinding it out. No, we're going back up top again. And that one is to Bennett, reach around, knocked down by Kaysen. Good Bennett job. was the target. And I tell you, Joxie's there, who had injured a knee in the first half, was questionable to return. He was in on Cutler fast, but Cutler still zipped it in there. Well, this is what you and I talked about in the pregame. Throwing routes, going across the middle. Watch Jay Cutler, good foot movement, and he's going to get into this one. It is right on target, but good coverage by Kaysan. <laughs> Ball take off. Look at that spiral. Yeah, he can throw some spirals. So I don't care what the conditions are. And Kaysan, you know, look, he is covered well. What are you going to do? Receivers, the way the rules are, hard to cover these guys down the field uh, in today's game. Timeout, Chicago. 13-19 left in the game, and the lead is 11 here at Soldier Field. NFL on CBS is sponsored by T. Rowe Price. Understanding the connections of a complex global economy. Invest with confidence. The all-new Volkswagen Passat. That's Das Auto. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. And the aerial coverage here is provided by MetLife. Cutler comes to the sideline, still groaning about yeah, a non-call. Talking to the official, you've missed two on this. Second down and ten. Locks it incomplete. Jammer on the coverage, Bennett the target. 
Well, you know, we've talked so much about you know all this today, but I'll say this about the Bears' offense. It struggled early in the year. Offensive line, you know, who's playing, whatever. They've settled it down, but they've been patient running the football through the course of this win streak and since they started playing better. And they do a great job. Mike Martz has been moving the quarterback more, changing up some of his philosophies and going, look, he's a, an NFL coach. He can do it a lot of ways. He's going to design plays that are going to work for his football team. Now the Chargers take a timeout on this series. With third down on the way for the Bears out of the break. Greg Minuski saying we got the wrong personnel in there. Norv, I need a timeout. Norv Turner's the only one that can call it from the sideline, and Norv Turner does it and is not happy, boy. Did he have a few words to say to everybody on the sideline? Let's see if it's worth it. Third and ten, and they get the first down anyway. There is a flag thrown as they, again, rifle it in there to Bennett, who is such a threat here on third downs. Firing the pass, holding, number 27 in the defense. The field is declined, the rolls on to the play. So a totally First wasted down. timeout. Paul Oliver on the slot against Bennett. And that's, you know, it's just a tough call either way. Paul Oliver had position. He's standing there. Bennett runs into him. But inside throwing down the field, curl routes, in cuts, just what we saw, the Bears are also at it. Forte has running room to the 45 of San Diego. Where they sealed that right side, he picks up 13. Well, now they got the San Diego defense guessing. That's what they do. Lance Lewis, good block on the edge. The fullback, our man Klutz, gets it done. And when you have a tight end or a fullback, the fullbacks are kind of coming in vogue again, Jim. We're seeing a few of them around the league. When they got, you got good blockers in front, you can get the edge sealed, and you can get the running back outside and get those big runs. That was the longest run of the game by the Bears. The 13-yard carry by Forte. And on first down, that pass is knocked down. Maybe it just came out of his hands funny. I think that's the case. Again, the Bears trying to do what's already been accomplished today by the Packers and the Lions, each victors today. Green Bay over Tampa Bay, Detroit in a wild shootout over Carolina, 49-35. And oddly enough, the Bears, this is the first of four weeks in the AFC West this late in the season. They will be traveling out to Oakland and hosting Kansas City and then at Denver in a four-week stretch. All in the conference, all in the AFC West, as it's now Forte to the 43. That's what we're talking about. Are they in the NFC North or the AFC West? You might like to be in the AFC West as, uh, as hard as it is to catch up with the Packers. But, you know, talking to Lovey Smith this week, I, you know, Yes. Is it already on their mind? Everything. Christmas Listen, Day against the Packers? Lovey Smith, I think, said it this way, and it just jumped right out. It's the best team I've ever had since I've been in Chicago. Now, he's been to the Super Bowl, and he went to the championship game last year. All kinds of room for Cutler, and Jammer finally bumps him out, but not until Cutler is able to scramble for a first. He just, he just so different, you know, Jay Cutler. When he gets outside the pocket, I've talked to you about that he can really rip it down the field, but now he runs. And most quarterbacks, when you flush them and they're running to the right, they're not very dynamic when it comes to making the throws down the field and that. So that's what makes him different. He wasn't hit with much force, but he never did bail out on the scramble. He didn't slide. He went ahead and well, ran it all the way to the sideline. Sub 11. Somebody would have twittered about it, you know. And on first down, that's just a gain of two for Forte. But, you know, I think when you look at the Bears, Jim, we talk about it. Look what San Diego has done today. They've really done some impressive stuff with all the injuries. And you got to find out who you are and you adjust. The Bears absolutely adjusted their football team from the start of the year to what they are now. 
you got to watch guys plays, uh, play, figure out how you're going to deal with the injuries, and do what is best for your football team. And the Bears have done that. I think the San Diego's made a good adjustment too today. It's been a four and a half minute drive following a charge of field goal. Intercepted. Payson has it. The receiver slipped. Not slipped. But if he can get past Cutler, he may take it all the way. Payson. And he's bumped out by Forte and the Chargers with that one errant throw or that one misstep by the receiver are right back in the game. You're right. And Kaysen been under such pressure today. He has been there to make the play. It's just been some incredible throws and catches against him. Sonsenbacher. Oh, yes. Feet come out from under him. He starts leaning before the cut so those cleats are not in the grass. Oh, it was Johnny Knox. I'm sorry. But he was leaning, Jim, and when you lean, all those cleats on the bottom of your shoes are not in the grass. That's why he fell. 64-yard return by Kaysen, and the Chargers are in the red zone at the 16. That's what the Chargers needed. Of course. Over to Tolbert, he dropped it. He would have had a collision upcoming with Erlacher, but it could have been a sizable gain. Who knows? You know, Jim, it's a screen. It is perfect. They got it set. Here he comes across, and I don't know. Erlacher's flying. He might have cut in there. I mean, yeah. you always hear that. Oh, it could have been a touchdown, but that was going to get some good yards no matter what. Just inside of 10 minutes to go in the game. Brown to the right, Jackson to the left. Gates in a slot to the left. And Rivers has the time, and now pocket collapses, throws it out of bounds. He was being chased away by Anthony Adams, who's in for Tuina today. Well, I'm looking down the field, trying to see if anybody's open. Phillip Rivers' initial look, he doesn't like anybody. There's nobody open. Brian Erlacher back in the end zone. Who's to the right? Nobody. Good passing off by the Bears defense. Good pass blocking by the Chargers. Nobody open to throw it to. Of course, they would love to finish this little drive off after the interception by Kaysen, but a field goal would make it a one-score game if they have to resort to that third down and ten. And River steps up and throws it to the end zone, and he's intercepted right back. The Bears return the favor with Major Wright. He was going to Vincent Jackson. Wright steps in front and makes the theft. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. And by Allstate. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. We're back after the pick by the Bears. Major right. There was on the back end of it a penalty against the Chicago defense. The interception after stands. the interception. That's worse than like conduct. Intercepting team number 95 and number 27 in a group demonstration. After this, the goal first down. So the Bears will have the football at the 10 yard line. What happened there, Phil? Well, we'll show it after this play, Jim. But Philip Rivers has managed the game beautifully all day long. And you got to know the score 31 20. Field goal was huge. Don't take a chance. First down for Tay. And uh, let me just show you the play. The Chargers did the right thing. First, they keep two people in the backfield to help Phillip Rivers. Watch Vincent Jackson. He goes to the back. Major right. Stays in perfect position. Never gives it up. Nobody chases, I say, the car. In other words, do your job. Let it come to you. And look at Major right. Sees it all the way. Reads the quarterback. And no matter where Phillip Rivers throws it, it was not going to work.
That's his 16th interception thrown this season, which is a career high. And the Chargers now have six great games with at least two giveaways. I can, I, I consider and go, I think Phillip Rivers had a, like a perfect game going as a quarterback. Well, he had started the half eight for eight. False start. Number 70 in the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Again, Thanksgiving Day, the tradition continues. Football from Dallas will be there for the Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys. Miami coming in off three straight wins now. Tony Romo and the Cowboys win today in overtime in Washington. It all begins with a special holiday edition of the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. Second and 14 with 8.40 to go. And that's Forte in traffic. And bouncing around for about four. Big third down play coming up for the San Diego defense. You know, we've been talking a lot about the new offensive line on the San Diego side, but with Edwin Williams at left guard, and then Chris Spencer got hurt earlier in the game. Lance Lewis right. over at right tackle. All kinds of changes, too, for the Bears on that offensive front. Yeah, they've done a good job, too. Spencer back in there. Edwin yep. Williams, they were worried about it. You know, he, he's not experienced. But the fact that he yeah, hasn't said his name today, it tells you he's done a good job. He started a lot last year as a rookie to Edwin Williams. That's Cutler, got it away. Got to get to the 20 for the first, and they have it. That's Matt Spaeth, the former Steeler, rumbling out to the 24 and a collection of 13 yards, his first catch of the day. This is everything, number 89 to the right of your screen that you will want. How about Spencer pulls around and gets out, gets in the way. And Jay Cutler, this is about managing the game. No, very low risk play. Wow, that is so quick though, these screens. Low risk, high reward, perfect call by Mike Martz. And Matt Spieth, you always look at him and say, well, he's going to stay in and block. That time they release him for the screen, it works well. Well, the big first down, you, know, you, you have him backed up if you're the San Diego defense. Yep. At one time on this drive after the penalty inside the 10. And now time just uh, ticking away here. And a new set of downs for the Bears up 11. Uh, you know, one first down in the NFL like that, it can be three or four minutes. It's, Jay Cutler taking his time, going to take that play clock inside of five at least every time. And down to three on that one as he pitches it over to Forte. And Forte's got about one. Forte on this game is not uh, exactly what he's been doing all season long. 17 carries for 46 yards. With some over 900 on the season. Well, it's a sign of a good football team then, Jim. They're scoring points. They got 31. They got the good special teams in Devin Hester. Got a guy that can throw it. They're finding other ways to create offense. Get them all involved. Gives them, makes them excited for this week's practice. Yeah, Forte, though, you have to think it's a Pro Bowl year for him, the way it's going. And they haven't had a skill position player in the Pro Bowl from Chicago in a long time and here he is and this is why as Forte has another first down not since Marty Booker in 2002 have they had a skill position player make it to the Pro Bowl and the last running back was Neil Anderson of 91 that, that, that's incredible the statement but how about the run watch it how about all these hop jumps and restarts For those of you expecting to see 60 Minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the Chargers and the Bears, Jim Nance and Phil Sims here in Chicago. First and 10, and that's Marion Barber reversing course. And finally wrestled down by Kaysen and Antonio Garay after a gain of three. 60 Minutes again will be seen in its entirety immediately after the game, except on the West Coast, where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. Well, this game, of course, is not over, but, you know, except for 
really a couple plays the Chargers have to be proud of what they've done overcoming all the obstacles the adversity to, uh, adversity today you know inside of five minutes to go San Diego has only two timeouts left danger of losing a fifth in a row and that's Barber yeah, he runs wildly and with great aggression he's got another four yards and even if this does not fall their way here at the finish if it's not a fast finish and they drop the four and six you've been saying all week when we've been here it's not over for the Chargers no that's how you look at it let's build of course they want to win the game but they look at that West you know they didn't say this to us this is you and I talking about it that they can still hang in there win the division games and the schedule is not the roughest going down the stretch and they can they've got to believe they can still win the AFC West Jim and they've got a lot of the players who are injured, they believe, coming back in the next couple of weeks. Third down and three. And again, the Bears are going to keep it going. Forte off the short screen. Chris Spencer with another nice block to free him. And the clock keeps running. What are you going to do? This is really clever. Fake it to him. You think fullback in the flat? No, it's an inside screen. Chris Spencer, man, he is leading the way day today down the field. But... Clever outside screens, a lot of them today. The Bears that time inside. Tough for a defense to to defend that. That one was good for 11, and they've converted seven straight third down situations. Forte met at the line of scrimmage, and they say the football's out. Whistles everywhere, but they keep on playing it out through the Chargers. Legit ripped it out, it looked like. Zeverett Brown decided to take it all the way home anyway. Let's see if there's any part of this. Matt Forte, I saw the hit. Thought he was protecting the football. It's... it's Runner is ruled down by contact, and San Diego has taken their second charge timeout. Well, they, I thought you were going to hear, would, hear a, a yeah, challenge. I, would, I wouldn't have taken the timeout. I would have no. challenged. To a get challenge, and if you lost a challenge, it would have cost you just a timeout anyway. It looks like the knee may have been down. Early 1 o'clock Eastern Time headlines. The Ravens today win that divisional game with the Bengals. Big game by Torrey Smith. And then, of course, Matthew Stafford threw for five touchdowns. And the Lions beat Carolina. And Carson Palmer and the Raiders went up in Minnesota. And the Raiders go to 6-4 and four and are in first in the AFC West. There's Rice over 100. Stafford again a huge afternoon and Michael Bush filling in for Darren McFadden again with another fine game let's make sure he's down this is close is the ball coming out yet there it comes out no you're right that was a good they are going to challenge it so may in fact if they don't win the challenge they'll be out of timeouts good point I thought last week, Jim Harbaugh on a drive where he had no chance of winning the challenge, threw a challenge out there when the Giants were driving. He's down. Looks like he still has control. Now I see it starting to just a little bit slip out of the hands. Watch. Yeah, you know what it is, Jim? There's so many hands in there, I can't determine who's what. Down. Oh, that was a good shot. I think we're going to find out he is down. Do you agree? I know you're still squinting and looking. Well, no, right now. Well, yeah, it, it looks like he's down. You can borrow my glasses. Doesn't have a lot of control of it right here. I mean, when that knee is down, yeah, it's, it's on close. the way. It's on the way out. But just to finish the thought, Jim Harbaugh challenged because the offense is moving on his defense. And he says, well, well, even if he loses, he got about a four-minute timeout. Once again, look at it. The left knee of Matt Forte. It's down. Is that ball coming out at all at that point? It's 
leech it, trying to rip it out. Well, there's no doubt when you go back and you look at it, when his knee hits the ground, the front point of the football is not in the fingertips of Forte. That could be, does he have the tip of the football? Ball is moving, it's so close. Yes. It is fractions. And again, you have to have indisputable evidence here. And this is really San Diego's pretty much its last chance. Is there enough there to overturn it? They're going to stay with the call. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner is down by contact. His knee is on the ground with possession of the ball. San Diego is charged their third and final team timeout and has no more challenges for the game. This is where you just wish you'd gone ahead and challenged it in the first place and only lost one timeout instead of costing two. Yeah, that's right, but still a good challenge by Norv Turner. I'm sure he was finally told upstairs and they go, you know, coach, why not challenge it? It's, it's it was definitely worth the extra time out to take that chance. Only three snaps in this quarter for the Chargers. Came after the interception by Payson. An interception that was gifted right back. Lovey Smith starting to break into a bit of a Victory smile, perhaps, as Forte is plugged at the line for no gain. San Diego will go home, and we'll see Tebow in Denver next week. And Denver is now 5-5 five and five and a game up on the Chargers. How about that? Jacksonville, Buffalo, Baltimore. You, you know, you look at schedules, and I don't even know what to make of them anymore. Is, are they tough? Is it? Yeah, there, there's some tough games in there. And you, you, everybody's thinking Chicago Bears, they're hot. San Diego Chargers, look what they've gone through with injuries and everything else. They came in there and, and this game was in doubt almost all day long here until the end. Third and ten. Down the one on the down clock. And they are stopped at the 45. So remember one little interesting thing here. Klutz is going to be snapping this back. They have not had to have him in a punting situation this half. He's, again, emergency filling in for Patrick Manley. And Two-minute warning, and it will be a big moment here for Klutz coming up to snap on the punt. A seven-and-a-half-minute drive about to come to an end. And we're back, and Tyler Klutz about to... Long snap and punt situation, first time in his career. Back to Podlish. And it's perfect. Oh, in fact, it's a pass and it's incomplete. Podlish overthrows Stelts. And I am stunned by that. This game is all but over at 156. And now they'll take over at the 44. Uh, look, we're talking about the wind is really kicked up. And I am stunned, too. That is a risk that you did not have to take. Yes, it was a gimme. Yeah, he gets close. It's almost a catch, but, boy, you talking about giving the Chargers a chance with that decision. Up 11. You figure they're going to find out a way, find a way to maybe pin them down inside the 10. Instead, they're near midfield. And Rivers in trouble. And oh! What's he doing here? It's intercepted. Intercepted by Corey Graham. It looked like he was just trying to throw it away, but he was. He didn't throw it away with enough aggression there. He was. I am convinced he was trying to throw it away. The coverage down the field, they're looking for a good play uh, or deep, and he just throws it and hooks it. On the run, never clears his body to get it out of the way. It's a catch, it's an interception. 
Wow. Yeah. Nor frosted. And even Philip Rivers telling us yesterday the roughest stretch ever ever been through in mm. his career these last four weeks is now going to extend to five. Only four plays in the quarter run by the Chargers. And two of them were interceptions. In fact, the last two throws by Philip Rivers picked off. Again, here's the lineup tonight on CBS. 60 minutes. All new episodes, Amazing Race, The Good Wife, CSI Miami. Tonight only CBS. So the Bears are on their way to five straight victories. Yep, Bears continue to roll. I'll say this about San Diego real quick. The run defense was awesome today. If their defensive front plays like that the rest of the year, they have a chance. Look at the total yards this quarter, Chicago. They did a good job, Jim, all day long, San Diego, with their offense maneuvering around an offensive line with basically three new starters. Their veteran quarterback made the two big mistakes that really hurt this football team today. Chicago is now 7-3. and three. San Diego goes to 4-6. and six. Five straight wins on one side. Five straight defeats on the other. The final score is Chicago 31 and San Diego 20. Coming up next, 60 minutes, followed by the amazing race. Then the good wife, followed by CSI Miami. So for Phil Sims and all the crew, Jim Nass saying so long from Chicago. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. And now let's go to James Brown in New York.